Okay, so here we are at lab one. So the focus of lab one is to be basically setting up C7 host over here. And with, for lab two, we're gonna be setting up these virtual machines, but let's just start with this one. So it always pays to be reading these instructions, especially for these first two labs where we're basically setting everything up that we're gonna need for the rest of the semester. Um, we start over here on part one so you can click over here to begin a download it's going to ask you for your username and password you just enter your my seneca username and password you should be okay to download this um, as you can see mine is going to take quite a while so i really need to get better internet but that's fine that's work for another day um, let's look at the important warnings over here so the first thing is we're gonna to have to make sure that our SSD is um, being recognized as a drive in Windows Explorer um, and also that it is formatted as XFAT so let me go over here and just verify that those two things are true so I've got this over here I'm gonna to go to this PC and I'm gonna be using Kingston SSD over here it says 223 free of 223 um, but that's probably kind of wrong anyway I can see that this is being recognized as a drive just fine so I can click on properties over here and I should see that the file system is XFAT if you do need to change this what you'll need to do is format it and the dialogue for that is over here um, I definitely rec recommend you set some sort of label that you can use to easily identify this thing and uh, I don't need to do this because it's already formatted this way but if that's something you need to do that's fine okay um, so this is all right now uh, I do not have NTFS that will cause problems um, I do know that this is being recognized now as a drive um, I do have virtualization set up on my computer um, that is really something you'll have to if you're having that issue I don't know what kind of BIOS you have and I don't know where they hide the options for these things but that's something you'll have to verify on your own okay the next thing is um, we're gonna be working with uh, VMware workstation um, as far as I know it shouldn't matter too much Sorry, my cat just scrolled the page. There we go, let's, let's go back. Okay, so we're gonna be working with Workstation here, and let me show you how to get that set up on your home machine. So I'm gonna to go to Seneca on the hub. I'm just gonna Google that. And uh, what you're gonna find is basically a uh, software repository and you should have access to VMware so the first thing you'll need to do is sign in um, you might have to create an account I don't quite remember uh, but you should be able to create an account with your my Seneca credentials um, so now I am logged in under my uh, faculty account uh, I can search for VMware so I'm just gonna do that now going to take some time so the one that we're looking for is workstation and you can see that uh, you can select as Windows or Linux um, I have it set up on Linux already so this is more of a Windows example now for me you can see that they're going to be asking me for $200 uh, for this and I don't feel like paying them $200 um, as students you should have access to this for free um, you'll have to add this to the cart and once you install workstation 12 uh, I don't think there's any special options you need to be aware of um, I already have it set up here so the thing that I'm going to be clicking on is VMware workstation pro just wait for that to come up okay yeah you can see I'm just using a trial version of this for uh, this first video uh, but you will absolutely need to enter a license key but again you get it for free so no big deal hi welcome back 
So what I've done is um, I've rebooted into Linux just because I prefer Linux. Um, these other steps shouldn't really, um, the kind of operating system shouldn't really matter because what we're really doing is basically working within VMware now. So you can see I've got Workstation 14. That's what I've got. Uh, the steps should be pretty similar if you're using Workstation 12. Okay, so we've got VMware installed. Uh, we also have a Kingston SSD here. And one thing that I have done here is I've created a directory called Virtual Machines. So we're going to be working within this. And um, just to show you, I'm going to open a program called Gparted. This is This is something specific to Linux, but um, should be fairly similar if you're using Windows or whatever. All I'm trying to show you here is that um, I have my Kingston SSD set up as XFAT. Okay, so keep in mind that that's important that we have this as XFAT. I have my instructions here. Um, the one thing to note, I have virtualization enabled in my BIOS so if you're new to BIOS and stuff like that it's uh, worth paying attention it's something that you enter when you're just starting your computer you might have to press delete or something like that to get into the uh, BIOS and change it um, I only have 8 gigs of RAM on this machine so this is going to change a little bit um, but you'll see as we go and these have been set so one thing I'm trying to point out is like as I'm going I'm looking at all the things that are bolded or in important windows and stuff like that um, you might think that's sort of self-evident that we should be paying attention to those but um, um, it's easy to get lost in these instructions because there's quite a few steps okay so with that all being said I'm gonna move this over here um, I'm going to show you one thing that we need to change over here so in VMware Workstation, I'm going to go to Preferences. Uh, we need to make sure that the default location for virtual machines is set to our solid straight hard drive. So my Kingston SSD is over here and I have it pointing into that virtual machines directory that I created. So this should be all set. It'll look slightly different in Windows, but you get the idea. Just make sure that everything that you're creating is being created on the SSD. Okay, so we're ready to start creating a new virtual machine. So the first thing we're going to do, this is going to be a custom advanced uh, configuration. We're going to click on here. Uh, hardware compatibility, workstation 12.x, perfect, that's fine. Um, going to next so we're going to up install the operating system later so we're going to go over here the settings that we need are number two Linux and I'm going to go into this drop down menu and I'm going to find CentOS 7 64 bit okay 64 bit so I'm going to go over here I'm going to change this from the default I'm going to change it to C7 host. Um, I recommend you keep the same naming scheme that we have in the labs. Just um, it makes things a little bit clearer uh, as we go. So I'm going to change this to two and two. I'm going to change this to 4096. So basically four gigs of my eight. Okay. I'm going to keep this as default network address translation I'm going to keep this as default and this as default and we're going to create a new virtual disk we're going to give it a size of basically as much as we can get away with I'm going to do 230 gigs uh, we'll click on next and the name of this is going to be C7 host and that's fine so keep that default Okay, we get a bit of a um, summary here. Everything looks good. I'm going to click on finish, but please note I'm not going to start the virtual machine yet. Okay. As you notice, I go over here. I've got this in 
yellow highlight so this is what we're gonna do next okay so once we click on finish and we close this we have this machine not powered on yet so what I'm gonna do is go to edit virtual machine settings okay the first thing I'm changing is under options and under advanced and you've got this firmware type over here we're gonna use UEFI so that's first major change the next thing I'm gonna do over here under CD DVD we're gonna use an ISO image okay so I'm gonna click on this and I'm going to browse to the image that we have downloaded now so the one I'm looking for is CentOS this okay I'm gonna click on open and finally under processors I'm gonna to go to virtualize Intel VTX EPT or whatever that's fine click on save okay so now we should be ready to power this on and begin the installation process for CentOS 7 finally so I'm going to start this up okay I'm going to click in this window I'm going to go under install CentOS 7 we don't have to worry about testing the media we just want to install it After a little bit of time goes by, we should get a screen to uh, bring up the installer. And uh, this will take more or less time, depending on what kind of machine you've got. Okay, perfect. So, first thing that we're going to change is the language to English Canada. And we're going to click on continue. Okay, so basically, all of these, um, we will go through these options one by one and we will uh, make the changes that we need to make. So, we've already set the language and the keyboard. This will be fine. So, the first thing to do, let's change this to Toronto so that'll give us the correct time um, and we might want to turn on network time why not okay it's not allowing it because we haven't set our network yet so maybe we'll do that next so we're gonna go to network and host name so you see that we have Ethernet here um, this is a virtual network interface device um, so it really doesn't matter what you have if you have Wi-Fi it's gonna show up as this anyway okay so two changes to make here first we're gonna turn this on uh, you should see an IP address pop up the next thing we're gonna do is change this to C7 host okay once we're done with this click on done let's see if we can turn on the network time yeah it's turned on now so that's great okay the next thing that we're done with localization we're gonna move over here we don't want a minimal install we want GNOME desktop so GNOME is a uh, say a um, desktop environment so there is Linux and then there's many flavors of Linux and um, all these desktop environments change how your desktop looks and how it operates so GNOME is one of the um, most common of them. It's been around for a long time. Um, it's pretty simple, but it'll work for whatever we want to do. I'm going to click on Done. It's going to take a little bit of time here um, with software and things like that. So we'll just give it some time to do what it needs to do. actually we'll just go right into installation destination because that is the next thing that we got to do so um, this is important to get right because otherwise you have to go through the process all over again um, 
the we're going to end with a uh, check script and what that script is going to do is check the configuration of your system make sure everything is what we expect it to be um, so if you get something wrong you know you might have to go and redo this entire process so I'm gonna go to I will configure partitioning we're gonna click on done so we're now gonna get into this um, manual screen where we have to create mount points for our installation okay nothing's gonna get changed until we let it go but um, let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to click, click on the add here. We're going to create a new mount point. Our first mount point is going to be boot EFI. Okay. Click on that. I'm going to click over here. This one is going to be 2954. Okay. Now, as we go, we have different options that we need to set. So this is not going to be LVM. Um, this is going to be a standard partition. If you get this wrong, you will have to go back and start from scratch. And it really sucks to have to do that in week nine. Um, so let's get it right this week and uh, everything will go better. So we have standard partition. That's good. So the next one we're creating is boot. Our boot is going to be 500. Okay, I'm going to add that. So, boot is going to be fine. We're going to leave the default settings. We want to make sure that this is XFS, and it is. So, that's fine. The next thing we are building is root. So, there's our root. and we are going to give it 30720 so as you go um, you'll notice when we look at the um, when we look at the notes um, if it's asking for 30 gigabytes we're basically going to multiply that by 1024 let me bring up my calculator here okay so if we have 30 gigs we're going to multiply that by 1024 and that's giving us 30720 so that makes it correct we're going to add that mount point okay so this is one of the first mount points where we're going to have to pay attention to these options over here so the first thing we need to make sure is that this is going to be uh, LVM and we don't want XFS here we actually want EXT4 so we're going to change that to EXT4 um, everything else should be fine the way it is. Okay, great. So now plus, we're creating another mount point. This one is going to be home. Okay. Now the desired capacity, what they told us was, if we look at the notes, they want 40 gigabytes. Um, you can go bigger than this. So I'm actually going to do maybe something like uh, 42. I'm going to multiply it by 1024. And what do we get? 43008. So I'll just type that in. Okay. Same as before. This needs to be LVM and it needs to be EXT4. Okay, so make the, those changes or suffer the consequences of doing this all again in a couple of weeks. The next mount point that we are creating is something that we have to type in. This is going to be where we place all of our um, other images. We're going to create like a CentOS 1, 2, through basically 1 through 3. Um, and we are going to be placing them in this directory over here. Uh, libvirt is something that we're going to be talking about next week. Um, Make sure that you spell everything correctly. Make sure you start with the slash over here. Okay. And um, this is asking us for 100 gigabytes. So let's bring up a calculator once again. I'm going to do 100 times 1024. And I get 102,400. Okay. 
this is going to be LVM and EXT4. And finally, the last thing we're going to do is create a swap partition. So this is basically, uh, let's say that you um, run out of RAM. Um, this ends up becoming sort of ad hoc RAM. It's a lot slower because we're using a hard drive instead of memory, but um, it's better than bottoming out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it um, the same amount as the RAM that I've given it. So I have like uh, four gigs of RAM and I'm going to give it four gigs of swap. Uh, actually, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so varlib home boot boot EFI root and swap and that should be everything. It's always good to check and double check so we've got swap ext4 this is going to be standard partition this one is going to be standard partition xfs so this one is you know default ext4 lvm lvm ext4 so we should be all right once we're done click on done we'll accept those changes and it looks like everything is in the clear here. We don't have any more check marks or anything like that. We've got network and host name set up and everything, so we should be good to begin installation. So we'll click on there. While we're waiting for this to complete down here, uh, what we're going to do is set a root password and a user. So if you remember a little bit from ULI 101, you might have talked about it with your instructor, but um, Linux is essentially kind of like a high-rise apartment. Um, it's built to serve a lot of different users. Each user has their own home. And just like a high-rise apartment, you might have a supervisor, which, is, which uh, they're responsible for you know, utilities and keeping everything in check. Um, so that is our root user. And the root user has a lot of responsibility, so we should be setting a strong password for them. I'd recommend that you keep the same password for all of your different um, virtual machines and write down your password. Have it be something that you can remember. Um, don't forget it. What I'm going to do here is create a password, um, and I'm going to create a user. The user is going to have my name, um, but I'm going to use the same password for this user. Um, it's not good practice in the real world, but it'll work for us. Okay, there we go. So we can click on done. We have a username now of, well, mine is going to be eBrower, yours is going to be something else. Okay. So there's nothing else to do here. We're just going to wait for the installation to complete. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So we get to this screen. The only thing you have to do, click on this, accept the license agreement. And we have a wired host name set up so we can finish configuration. Okay, so this is our login screen. We can log in with the password that you have created and will remember. And we should be good to go. We're going to get a screen pop up with a little bit of uh, information. We can change our name, or I mean uh, language or whatever. Next. Uh, I'll just turn this off. Um, we don't need to create online accounts. You can if you want, but uh, it really doesn't matter too much. Okay, we can start using CentOS Linux. There's a little bit of a tutorial here. But basically, this is our 
this is our desktop. Over here is uh, where you can shut down. So you should always be shutting this down before you disconnect or log out or anything like that. Otherwise you could damage your image and you will have to do these steps all over again. Okay, you can also reach settings over here. Uh, this will bring up a calendar, notifications, basically. Applications uh, is where we find, well, applications, obviously. Um, we are going to use some of these very heavily and others not so much. Um, places is where you can get into your file system. So this is another way to be looking through your file system. Um, probably recommend that you try to do it through the shell but um, it really doesn't matter too much. So other locations is where you start to see the uh, root file system. If you remember from ULI 101, this should be a little familiar to you, hopefully. Uh, home is where we're gonna have your user uh, space, basically. Um, but now we're gonna do a couple of things uh, just to set up. Um, and make it a little more comfortable. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is maybe go to settings. There's a couple things I want to change here. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off the uh, blank screen. Um, just because if you have uh, finished a lab and you're waiting to get signed off, you don't want the screen to turn off and have to plug in your password again. It's just going to save time. So we'll do that. We'll also go and um, change the display a little bit. Um, it definitely helps to have a little bit more space. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, well, let's try that. So this is fine. It's a little bit better, but um, I think I can go big it, a bit bigger. So let's do this one. Yeah, that'll be fine. And one reason I'm doing this is, um, well, you'll find out. Um, we just want to make sure that we still see the bottom bar along the bottom here because um, uh, we don't want to get that cutting off, getting cut off. Uh, system tools, software update. And um, you can see that there was something running when I came in here and there are 776 of updates available so we'll just get started with this the reason I have so many is because I'm using a slightly older version of uh, CentOS than the one that you should be downloading so hopefully you won't have this many things to install but as soon as I run this um, my CentOS will be up to date with hopefully what you've got so we'll let that go and while that's running, we can do a couple more things. So, if you take a look over here, there's uh, several things that they're asking you to do. Um, this warning, again, is about uh, always shutting down CentOS when you're getting ready to leave. Um, don't save time because you will, event you will ruin your image and you will have to recreate it. Um, so we're going to disable SE Linux now. I'm going to let you do part two of this. Um, that is important, um, but you can do it on your own. So let's do the SE Linux. First thing I'm going to do, bring up my terminal. Um, one thing I'm going to do right now, um, I prefer having different colors so I'm just gonna go with, go with solarize but you know you do whatever you like see I, I prefer that so once again um, I'm going to make a fairly important change to the system so I'm going to use this su dash to log in as root once again enter the password I'm going to make sure that I turn off that before I do so and there we go so uh, you will notice over here is a dollar sign and over here is a hash tag 
or a hash symbol. The hash symbol means that I am now the root user. So I'm going to use vim to make one change. I'm going to go vim etsy se linux slash config. So se linux is a way of um, It's a security measure, essentially. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is disabling it. You should never do this in an actual setting, but um, it's going to make our lives easier. So we'll just do this now. So let's change it to disabled. And I'm going to escape. Hit the colon and X. And uh, that will we'll see that change when we uh, reboot. But uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. So, if you're looking and paying attention here, um, we're going to have SE Linux disabled. Uh, part two is something that you should be looking at. Uh, we're performing software updates at the moment. Um, this process with the yum update, we're basically doing the same thing just with the graphical user environment. Um, part five is an introduction to shell scripting, which is very important. So in the final exam, we will be asking you to write a shell script. Um, this is not something that you should be skipping over. Um, I'm going to leave it to you to be working on. I'm going to show you just maybe the, um, maybe the, uh, procedure here for um, getting your lab one signed off okay so if you'll notice they're asking you to create a root bin directory and then we're going to use wget to be grabbing just um, a script so let's work on that now so the first thing is to go over here so I'm going to navigate into Not toot, root. I'm going to use pwd just to see where we are. We're in root. So this is kind of like the home directory for the root user, which we are right now. So what I'm going to do is use this command, make directory, uh, to create a bin directory. Bin for binaries. So this is where we're going to be sticking a bunch of our scripts and things. OK. So once I'm here, I'm going to change directory into it. Um, maybe now is a good time to talk about ls. So hopefully you remember ls from uh, uli. There's nothing in this directory. But uh, for example, if we go over here, you'll see a bunch of output. Um, and hopefully you remember uh, using ls-l. So when we do this, we are going to get a whole bunch of stuff. And this is giving us a more detailed um, uh, list of, well, it's, it's giving us more details about these files and directories, right? So we can see permission levels and stuff like that. Um, one thing to note is we have a very handy um, shortcut called LL. And LS-L and LL do the same thing, basically. Hopefully you remember about aliases. Yet another thing to go back and review. Um, LL is an alias for ls-l, so it'll do the same thing. Okay. Um, what else? We should also talk about this. So I'm going to go in here. Um, during the course, there's going to be a lot of uh, moving files and changing files, editing files, and things like that. Um, you should be, hopefully, comfortable with commands such as move, uh, such as copy. Uh, and remember, if you're going to do directories and stuff like that, you'll have to use copy-r. Um, rm-r for doing stuff like uh, removing files and directories. Um, the CD and um, LS and everything like that. 
Um, one thing to keep in mind though as we're going through, um, I really want to get people comfortable with auto-completing your file paths. Okay, So what that means is um, say that you begin typing a uh, file name, so a directory name in this case. Um, I can use tab to auto-complete it as long as this is an existing directory. Okay, And I can hit tab twice and I get sort of suggestions about what I can what I can enter next, right? So I've got e Brower, so I'm just going to type in e, press tab. Now I'm in home e Brower. Okay, I've got a bunch of stuff here. So let's say I do cd and a capital D. Hit tab twice. It's going to give me a list of um, different options that match the pattern that I've got so far, right? So let me type in O. Hit tab twice again and now the number of options is like um, uh, diminished from 3 down to 2. So let's go to W and I'm gonna get into downloads. So not only is this more convenient and faster, um, it also stops you from making so many typos. If you are hitting tab reflexively like I do, um, as soon as things stop auto-completing and you think they should be completing, uh, you know that probably something unexpected is going on. Most likely you have a typo, but maybe that file isn't existing in the same place you thought it was. Um, anyway, it's a piece of advice. Keep it in mind. The next little thing I want to show you uh, with the shell is using arrow keys uh, to be cycling through your previous commands. Okay, so you can see all of the stuff that I've been doing so far, and I can go, and it's a very easy way to repeat commands or to, you know, go back up. Let's say I do this, and I have like a mistake, so I can hit up and just add the S and maybe tab just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And uh, let's see, that's not going to let me do it, but that's fine. Oh, I am in downloads already. Okay, never mind. So, um, the next thing I can show you is history. So, if you're having issues, this is probably what I'm going to be using to try and figure out what you've done wrong um, because it's telling me exactly all the steps that have been taken in the last little while. There's another way to use this, and this is Control R. Okay? This is going to bring up a reverse eye search. What I'm going to be able to do with this is be searching through my own command history. So it won't show you options that you've never tried before, but anything that you've done before, you can you can see what it's going to do. Um, so let's say if I start typing in vim, it's going to autocomplete with the last command that included the word vim in it which was changing our se linux config file so it's um that's something that you'll find very handy hopefully oops okay um so i'm going to go back to root bin i'm going to use this wget command to be grabbing our first Check script. So at the end of every lab, you're going to run a check script, um, and this will verify that you've taken all the steps that you need to take, and hopefully it will succeed. So I'm going to run that. We're going to wait for it to resolve. Okay. This is telling me now that it's saved, so I can verify that with LL, and I can see uh, a script there. The problem is that we can't run it yet, so what we're going to have to do is run a chmod command to change this. Um, I'm going to add execute permissions to it for everybody, 
and I'm going to enter the uh, file name. So one other thing that I want to show you before we move and do this. Um, let's say that you get into a situation where you've downloaded a file and um, you don't know where it is. You can't find it. Um, hopefully you remember uh, from ULI 101 about the find command. So the find command should be something that you um, use as sort of your uh, first troubleshooting tool. Okay, so the find command takes um, basically several arguments. We're going to start by defining where we want to start our search. Okay, so we're going to be starting our search in root, which means it's a very, very broad search. The search is going to take a long time, but that's okay because we're searching in every possible location it could be. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is specify name. And the name that I'm looking for is, uh, let's say, lab1 star dot bash. Okay, so it's lab1 followed by any number of characters as long as it ends with dot bash. And there's one other thing I'm going to do over here. So name is self explanatory, um, but this is not case insensitive. So that means um, it's not going to catch anything with a capital letter in it. If I change it to I name though, um, it basically ignores case, so it'll give us more results. Um, I find most of the time if there's spelling errors it's because, you know, a capital letter is in there and you don't remember which capital letter or something like that. Maybe you're doing camel case. Who knows? So I really recommend that you stick to I name because you'll get better results. And the last thing I'm going to do is send any error messages to dev null because I don't want to read any error messages. Um, I don't care about the error messages. I just want the output. Okay. If you don't remember what this does, um, it would be good to review this. Um, do a Google search or something like that. So let's run this. Okay, and we got one result, and it's exactly what we we're expecting it to be. It's in root bin lab one check dot bash. So let's move there. And there it is. So keep that in mind when things um, go wrong, you should be using find. If you lose stuff, find it. Okay, I'm going to use tab to autocomplete that and we're going to run it. Okay, and as you can see, most of the checks have succeeded. Uh, the one thing that is missing is root bin my report dot bash. So let's move over there. As you can see, I am near the bottom of the lab. That's because I skipped an important bit, which is all of this stuff over here. So basically, uh, the, the thing that I'm going to leave in your hands is part five as well as part two over here. Don't forget about that part. Um, you will be creating a system information report script. Uh, this is the first script of many that you will be writing for us. Um, it's going to introduce you to several of these um, new uh, commands which you should absolutely remember and write down in your lab report. Um, I'll leave it for you to be working on. It should be fairly straightforward. Once you have done this, hopefully, hopefully this script should succeed and you will be get, able to get it signed off and you'll be done for the lab one. Okay, um, hopefully that's everything for now. Um, I'll check back with this software update. This is going to take a little while now, but I think I'll leave it for now and hopefully this will succeed and uh, hopefully it'll succeed for you too. So take care.